the Bacher Barua, the man in his poetry, next on In Focus. Welcome to In Focus. In Focus examines the people and the issues that are making news in Orange County. In Focus is produced by students enrolled in the television production class at Golden West College. I'm Warren Carter, your host for In Focus. Joining me in the studio is Debacher Brewer, English professor at Golden West College. Debacher will be reading and discussing selected poems from his recently released book, The Womb of Memory. Welcome to In Focus. Thank you. This is the second time you've joined us here on In Focus. You come to this point in your life right now through a rather interesting route. You'd like to share with our, 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 our viewers, you know, the beginning of that, of that journey and how, the, how, how, how that has be affected your poetry. I have to go back to 30 years or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I came here from India and Bangladesh. Basically, I lived in both countries. I grew up in Bangladesh, but I also was educated in India and Bangladesh. The way I came here is a long story, but to make it short, I have to say that when I was a teenager, there was the civil war um, where a lot of people died, millions actually. And following the civil war, I finished my master's and got a job. And I felt intellectually and even physically economically stifled, even culturally so. So I was trying to define myself in some way where I can express my imagination, express my intellect. And so I was drawn to teaching and writing literature. And eventually I got a scholarship and came to this country. Now, once you arrived, uh, right, were you coming directly to California or was or were there various stops along the way? There were various stops along the <laughs> way. <laughs> Uh, my first stop was in Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, I got a British Council scholarship to study linguistics in the University of Edinburgh. After that, uh, I came to Stony Brook, SUNY Stony Brook, uh, in New York, and I did my PhD in literature there. And I spent one year in Buffalo to do some research on poetry. And then I got a job in UCLA for six years. I was a lecturer in the UCLA writing programs. And only then I came to Golden West. And then Golden West became lucky enough to yeah. get you at that point. How has your, has these early days, or how has those early days of this journey, has that had the, the effect, or was that the motivation for the development of the, your book of poetry? Well, that's a very good question, Warren. Um, I will try to give you the best answer I can, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it is a difficult question. I think the way I came to poetry, I came to poetry as a teenager. Uh, when I was um, going to school. And for me, um, as I was going to school in, um, as a high school student and then a later college student, the only way I could differentiate myself from everything else that was going on around me is by studying literature. Um, because life in Bangladesh, life in India is not easy, as you know. And plus, I was the member of a very small minority community uh, where uh, discrimination and intellectual suppression is the norm. So for me, poetry became an escape, especially European and English literature at that time. I only went back to Indian literature much later. So that was my introduction to poetry. However, when I came to USA and I came to England, I did not write poetry for many years because I was not self-confident enough to do that in English. I was writing that in Bengali at that time. So I came to English poetry only after I wrote some English fiction because to me, writing fiction was easier than writing poetry at that time in the 90s. So I published some short stories and wrote some fiction. I came to poetry only at a life crisis. Actually, 
about three or four years ago, I was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness. And uh, my wife, who is in the studio, and I, we were talking about all these fundamental uh, issues that people deal with, you know, life and death. And at that point, I was drawn back to my original inspiration that defined myself, which is poetry. And I started seriously writing poetry, wrote about a hundred of them uh, in two years. And this book is uh, one of the products of that. Um, let's, I'm going I'm to back up a little bit as you were talking about it. So you, you were writing only poetry? You have only, only been writing poetry or other forms of, uh, of, of literature? Um, I came to poetry actually at last. Before that, I wrote fiction, short stories, and I wrote academic articles okay. that people <laughs> write you know, for uh, tenure and job and things like that. But once the tenure is done, I stopped academic writing because to me it's not very inspiring. Your, um, short, your, your short stories, now those were based on, on your, your, your growing up or what, were those, what, what was those based on? Well, you know that people who navigate between cultures, people who navigate between countries and continents, um, they are not as uncommon as they used to be. And one of the main issues that they deal with, uh, which I was dealing with, is the who am I? You know, am I American? Am I Bengali? Am I Indian? Uh, what is my home? You know, how do I connect? You know, what is the role of uh, this kind of uh, search for personal fulfillment with uh, people as they live their lives, you know, what is the connection between the personal and the global. These are some of the issues, including confusions that come from that, questions that arise from that, are uh, the uh, subject matters that, that I deal with in my writing. And I think writing to me is a way of reflecting and meditating on life. Did you keep a journal? Or, or you know, like a lot, of the, a lot of writers have kept journals and they go back to that to, as their inspiration for, for future stories when you were growing up? I am a horrible journal writer. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, try writing journals for a while and it becomes basically daily things like what I did for lunch and what I did for dinner, that kind of thing. And I, I don't get into the reflective mode that well. Uh, so I know that some people depend on journal writing for their creative writing. For me, I have to sit down and concentrate on creative writing to re actually do that. Journals don't work with me. I'm not saying it is not a great way of writing, but just for me, it doesn't work. You, you, you mentioned something. You were also, when you were talking about the, the journey through, you were talking about that your, a lot of your original writing uh, was in, was in your, your, your native language. Bengali. And on, what's, the, what's the difference between, between um, poetry or stories in, 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 in the Bangladesh versus English? Was there, was there a difference? Was there, was there a difficulty going back and navigating back and forth? or? Well, that's why I didn't write poetry for <laughs> 25 years or so. Uh, there is a big difference in terms of the rhythm and cadence and imagery. I think poetry is untranslatable. You really cannot translate from one language to another. You can capture some of the cadence, some of the ideas, but the sound itself, the musicality, all of that is very, very different. So for me, I had to internalize English before I could write in English. In a way, writing in two different languages, I think, is good for the brain because the brain is exposed to different ways of relating, different ways of perceiving, different modalities of being. So I would say that, yeah, it, it was great to have that experience, but it just delayed me. <laughs> when you... Uh... What writers, what poets, you say, influence you the most? Wow. Um, or when, when, many. You, when, you, when you read poetry or when you are reading uh, for pleasure, what do you read? I don't know if that's a Sarah Palin question or whatever. No, it's a great question. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I have to say that uh, off the top of my head, the ba main things in English, uh, Ezra Pound and William Carlos Williams, um, Wallace Stevens, um, even going back to Emily Dickinson and Walt Whitman, these are great American poets that everyone who is serious about poetry have to know and have to absorb because what they are showing is how to make something new 
how to use the language in a way that creates some novelty. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna come back. We're gonna take a break. When we return, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the Bacher and his uh, and his book, The uh, Womb of Memory, and also he's gonna be reading selected excerpts from the book. That's when the focus returns. I'm pretty sure everybody in the industry needs their employees to have. The class prepared me by giving me more hands-on experience. We get to go in the field and actually do television production. Uh, the class has actually uh, phenomenally prepared me um, towards my career goal. I have about a year left with my training and education before I actually uh, end up in the job market that I want to be in. The class has prepared me by um, giving me a lot of hands-on experience. It's, um, it's taught me everything from being a stage manager to working the cameras to being in the control room and the different machines, working the different machines in uh, the control room. Prepare for an exciting career in broadcast and video production at Golden West College. At Golden West College, you can earn an Associate of Arts degree in broadcast and video production and a Certificate of Achievement in video production. Golden West College. Broadcast and Video Production Department also offers certificates of specialization in sportscasting, avid editing, broadcast journalism, electronic movie making, script writing, After Effects motion graphics. Students work in a dedicated state-of-the-art television studio which is used for instruction and in the production of programs for broadcast and cable television. Golden West College is the only community college in Orange County that teaches AVID editing, the industry standard, using dedicated AVID HD editing stations. Golden West College provides students with state-of-the-art equipment for use in classes. Each of the instructors in the broadcast and video production program are working professionals in the industry. The curriculum is based on broadcast industry standards and is reviewed regularly by an advisory board of broadcast and video production professionals. Daytime and evening classes are available. Classes are affordable. Financial aid is available. What are you waiting for? For more information, visit us online at www.gwc.info or call 714-895-8798. That's Golden West College, Broadcast and Video Production, located in Huntington Beach, California. Welcome back to In Focus. If you are just joining us, my guest is the Bakker Brewer, professor and chairperson of the English department here at Golden West College. DeBacher is the author of a recently published collection of poems called The Womb of Memory. Before I, we go into read, I got a couple other th you know, questions. You began to talk about what your motivation was for writing you know, the book, um, the taking and bringing all those together. And you started and then we kind of got sidetracked. Mm -hmm. You want to kind of go back to that. Uh, what was the motivation for, for pulling this all together? Self-reflection. Um, I told you about that illness I had right. and it prompted me to um, think about what I was doing and how I was relating more vitally to my work and to my family and to uh, people altogether and I felt that there was something missing you know um, as a teacher um, I need to practice what I teach <laughs> okay um, which is writing and as a um, husband and a family member, uh, I need to relate more effectively with my wife and with my you know, relatives and things like that. I mean, oh. there are many gaps there, but this is one way to do that for me. I'm going to read, couple, uh, read one, of the, um, one of the comments, the quotes everybody gets when they get a book, and I was, I was really struck by this. Mm -hmm. The first one, um, this is by uh, Dave Newman, author of the Club Room, Club Boom, Midnight and mm -hmm. Better Business. He wrote about the book. In the womb of memory, DeBacher has pulled off an amazing feat. He has written gorgeous lyrical poems that are deeply rooted in the real world. Family, geography, nature, love. He looks into the darkness and sees beauty. 
He looks at beauty and sees the darkness. Wonderful poems. Mm. And if, I mean, if I was going through and I read, I, and that motivates me to begin to going through, and I must, I must say, it was a deeply reflective work. You're going to read um, a couple of poems mm. from this one. Tell us about the first one. Sure. The first one, I think I will make it seasonal. That's okay. I was walking through the campus today, and I saw these jacarandas blooming. You know, they are so beautiful. So the, my first poem is called Jacaranda. And uh, as I was describing uh, the flowers, I was struck by the presence of the flowers. And also it reflected back on my, you know, habitual distracted thinking. You know, say, how come we are not like the flowers? And then it, it ends with uh, the dichotomy between human thinking and the presence of the flowers. And there is a wish that our language would be as good as the flowers. So that's how it goes. Jacaranda. This seasonal profusion of pale purple, so luminous in the sun, stains the tar pavement below. I go softly in fear of slipping into an old habit of clamorous voices rasping in my head. What can I say about envy or joy, those currents we need to let flow, surging or dying with the wind? How I wish for words to suffuse the warmth of an inner inherence like the flower silence that stuns. So that's the first one. And I want to read a second poem. Uh, it's called Rupa in Utah. I told you about my illness um, four years ago. And once we became confirmed about you know, what was wrong, we took a trip to Zion Canyon and Bryce Canyon in Utah. They are magnificent places. Truly so this uh, almost natural cathedral, <laughs> as I was looking at those things, we were talking about life and um, impermanence, um, beauty, love, all of these things. So they all kind of go into the poetry. And I like the poem also because it includes the process, the, the imperfections, the, um, the rawness of life as well as the beauty of it. So it's called Rupa in Utah. Um, page 38. <laughs> <laughs> On Riverside Walk at the north end of Zion, we sat on a rock to watch the Virgin River cascade between canyon walls. The fine summer breeze, which you wish to bottle for later use in hot arid zones, mixed its whisper with the water's rush and sank inward through our sense of touch and hearing. We ate overripe mangoes, threw the yellow skins down the rushing river, and felt idle next to the sun-flecked vigor of columbine, manzanita, and creosote bush. Now focus well, you said to me. Look at the rapids, water in one spot, the arcs, lines, and emerging shapes, each unique and all consistent, like raga improvisations. What unites them is larger and subtler than a musical scale. It's the measure of flitting moments of impermanence. The gawking tourists who flock here for scenic beauty, fitness, or fun with friends often ruin with their echoing hoots this deeper silence of change. Later, bereft of words among the gaunt Bryce Canyon hoodoos, you quietly wept, your fingers pressed on rock palettes of pink pastel, ochre, and intermediate colors, then smeared a third eye on your bent forehead, the old Indian marker for wives or mendicants, is sculpted by the patient ministry of wind and water. The high plateaus became a ravine of effigies, eagles, lions, couples, country dancers, and other tableaus of human or animal love, these canyons singing a silent song of merging, dissolving selves in twilight, the hour of your birth, in a far country. Having sat 
along the, the banks of the Virgin River, mm -hmm. and it's just um, you are familiar. With oh, that. very, very familiar, and yeah. Um, yeah, it captures it well. It captures it very well. The next one you're going to read is. It's called Crystal Cove. I think, do you know Crystal Cove? Yes, Crystal Cove. Yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, we have a beach here in the background. <laughs> uh, but this is another beach. Um, it's a very short poem. And what I'm trying to capture here is kind of an implicit drama. I was there alone after, one week after I was there with my wife and a friend. So there's a contrast between being with others and being alone, um, which is what I'm writing about. Crystal Cove. I pick three bleached pebbles with thin blue veins and array them invoking the diamond net of stars. My mind in a ductile reach attaches to shapes as the loud tongue of impermanence lashes the shore, is spitting our broken shells, licking clean sandpiper footprints. Came here just a week ago, rejoicing with friend and wife, now enthroned alone on a layered disk of metamorphic rock, I survey creation with a mind as calm as the tide pool and closed near my foot in its own web of interdependence. Sea anemones and silvery fish is still and ready to spring. As I read this poem, I remember that last image really uh, is important to me, which is looking into the tide pool and seeing the sea anemones and fish and how they are very tranquil, but they can just jump at any moment, uh, which reflects the state of my mind at that point, very taut and tense, and at this, but superficially calm. But you, you, you mentioned earlier that mm -hmm. you're not a journal person, so, mm -hmm. so that when you're, you're, you're in, a, in, a, in a place, you just completely just internalize that or just make this snapshot or just make these mental notes that when you sit down to go back to reflect? Or? Well, I think what, yeah, you were right. Uh, it's kind of a meditation. Uh, you know, in, uh, people have an idea about meditation that it's you just close your eyes and empty your mind. But that is not quite true. Um, in Western literature, as well as in the East, meditation has a different meaning, which is focus, concentrate, and really pursue a thought to its logical conclusion. It's a meditate on something. And so there, you're sitting there and, and pursuing that um, and writing it in that way. And it's, it's almost like you develop a sensitivity to mm -hmm. the most minute little detail Details. there. And yeah. And you, yeah. you have an, another? Yeah. Well, I will probably read another one that uh, I wrote recently, also dealing with the beach, since we live in the beach area. Um, this was in Dana Point. And this is a this is a this is a, a new one. one. This not is a, not, not in the book. book. Oh, this is yeah. an exclusive here. An exclusive, you're giving us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, I hope to uh, collect enough for a second book. Um, this has to do with, you know, I was walking on a trail, um, it's a beautiful beach, and I saw a dead pelican uh, kind of laying its head on a rock and just sitting there looking out to the ocean. Meanwhile, other pelicans were flying around. So life, death, permanency, you know, you know, you know the vitality and not lack of vitality, all of these things become one. Pelican Cove. After a lifetime of gulping down fish and hovering over the rolling blue and the roaring breakers, he came down to die at this little cove under an overhanging rock, laying down his large beak on a flat ledge like gently placing a flute on a mantle. His sightless eyes open to the ocean, his drying nose smelling the salt air merging quietly with the elements, dissolving a self there once was, and accepting what must be. Gulls and other pelicans kept flying, their shadows careening up or cartwheeling on gray rock walls right above his head, in a benediction of life and motion, lightly touching and taking in this muted aftermath of life. There is a peace in this ability to take it all in, 
the surf, the salt, the rocks, the wind, an animal graced with the moment, when even lying down to die has its fullness and bloom. And with that, mm -hmm. we'll return following this break. Welcome back. My guest today is Debacher Brewer, chairperson of the English department here at Golden West College. Debacher has been reading selected excerpts from his recently, recently released book of poetry, The Womb of Memory. And in the time remaining, because we're really, really, really for time, mm -hmm. if people are interested, and this is a fascinating, fascinating book, mm -hmm. um, how can they get copies? They can get copies from the World Parade Books. I think the uh, website is here. I think, w, they have a graphic, w, I think they have a graphic yeah. for that. Worldparadebooks.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any and other, also in the college bookstore. In the college bookstore. That's yeah. Golden West College. Golden West College. Golden West College. Bookstore. And a yeah. discount for students. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other future books on the horizon? An expanded edition of this will come out in the summer, later in the summer. I'll you, have some short stories uh, as well as poems. Yeah. Now, your short stories if, are also based on this type of reflective thinking? or Well, or they are based more on character, situation, plot, you know, conflict. Uh, but they are, uh, m majority of them are set in India and Bangladesh. But one of them is set in USA. That was my next, cause yeah. I think most people don't realize that you're also a very big movie fan. Any, mm. any idea or any possibility of one of your stories being turned into a Hollywood epic? Well, that's the <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> that's the fantasy of most writers, but I'm happy with writing little stories at this point. You were, you were talking very briefly about, about your stories. How do your stories differ from your poems? I mean, and, and, and their background and, 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 and the way you approach them. They are kind of coming from two different sides of my brain. <laughs> your, your stories yeah. are, are reflecting more on your, on your childhood, your time in India. And right, right. And, and I would say that one way of making sense of it is that in the story, I try to work out several problems and conflicts and tensions through the interaction. For example, one of my stories deals with father-son relationship, which uh, in my life, father-son relationship is a major thing. I didn't read that. I was going to ask you yeah. that the poem about your father I thought yeah. was fascinating. I really, yeah. I really yeah. like that. Yeah. I could talk, and we have to have you on again when you have the expanded edition out. Thank you, Debacher, for coming on the program and sharing your inspirational poems with us. 
For additional information or to order a copy of The Womb of the Memory, visit the website. Thank you for watching In Focus. I'm Warren Carter. Good night. Thank you.